Hello, Ken from the CC, here today with a 3D tutorial. This tutorial is going to be focusing on how to make more realistic materials from a texture. There are many ways to do this, but we're just going to focus on bump mapping for today. I'm going to be using a program called Cheetah 3D on OS X, but many other programs like Blender and Houdini and all these other great 3D programs can do this as well. But Blender and Cheetah 3D are on the free to low cost side, so I will be using these programs. So, the workflow in Blender or another program might vary a little bit, but it's all universal when it comes down to bump maps and textures, all the vocabulary is the same, so hopefully you can learn something from this. Okay, so, here is what I want to do. I have this very simple scene I have set up right here. And there's a sky texture out here, and there's a light source, and I have these windows, and there's some glass in there. So, what I want to do is create a metal floor. And I can do that by importing a texture. So we'll start with that. I'll go to add a material. I'll choose material. And then I'll go to my diffuse. That's what you see when light bounces off of it. And I'll go to image. Load. And I will go to my desktop here and choose this metal texture. So then we'll click on this again to go edit some more properties. The specular, that's that white spot you see on here. We're not going to use that for this, so let's turn that down to black so no light creates a little specular like that. So the next part we're going to be focusing on is bump mapping. Essentially what bump mapping does is it takes the image and it makes it look more three-dimensional. It makes the light cast shadows, like when you look at a wall you don't just see a flat wall. Typically you see little creases or holes and shadows are casted there from light sources. So that's what we can simulate inside of Chi to 3D or Blender or whatever program you're using. And if you're interested in good textures, there's a website that I typically use and I know of a lot of people that use this. It's called cgtextures.com. They have a premium service and a free service, but the free service gives you access to a lot of these great patterns, images, decals with alpha channel in them. So I recommend using that website for some sources. So we have the metal texture in there. So now I'm going to go to my box object here, which is just this room. And I'm going to go into polygon mode and select the bottom surface here because that's the floor. That's where I want to put this metal. I'm going to click it and drag the texture or the material, excuse me, onto there. So then I'm going to go to the camera and turn the camera light on just so I can see a little bit easier. So you can see we have this metal flooring here. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on the material inside the object browser here. And this lets me change the UV wrapping. That's basically the size of the material on a surface. So I'm going to press Command D to deselect it just so I can see it easier. And when I adjust these, you can see it changes the scaling on the surface, so I'll change this to 10, and I'll make this higher than 10 since it's a kind of a rectangle shape, and that looks pretty good. So now we got a good floor going on here. Now I'm going to go to the camera and turn the light off again, so we can actually use our scenes lights. And now let's say I am doing a shot that is close up to the floor, and let's say I also have a light in here, so I'm going to go to scene and add a light. And let's say there's some light source, who knows where it's coming from, this is just an example. And it's near the floor, and I'm zoomed in. So if I go to render this out, you will see we see that metal texture on the floor there, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now I called it a texture because really it's just an image right now. The difference between a texture and a material is simple. The texture is the image, the material is actually the properties of it in a 3D scene. Reflections, different shading, shadows, and bump mapping, transparency. So many different things you can do to make more realistic 3D textures. 3D materials, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is create a bump map. And creating a bump map is pretty simple. We're just going to use an image editor to change this image a bit. I'm going to use Preview built into OS X because it has plenty of editing tools. An open source one, it's kind of an alternative to Photoshop. It's GIMP, if you've heard of that before. It's a really nice one. It's free. All we need to do is adjust the color. So we're going to go to adjust color inside of Preview. 
and just make it black and white. So reduce the saturation. Bump maps are typically in black and white. And what I like to do, sometimes is I like to exaggerate the texture a little bit. Just exaggerate the shadows and the bump map. So I like to add a little bit of contrast in there too. So when I do that, it makes everything a bit sharper there. So you can kind of see where the, like the damage is. You can see where this line is and this line. It's just easier to see. It looks better when it's rendered in 3D. So I'll go do a save as of this metal texture and I'll just call it bump so I know the difference and I'll just keep it as a JPEG. So now we have the two textures. We have the metal texture and the metal texture bump which is going to be used for the bump map. So back in our 3D editor I'm going to choose that material we were working on and I'm going to go to bump mapping click this little square textures image and now we can load in our bump map texture so now we've created a bump map. So now I'm going to render this and take a look at the difference here when we're up close to the floor. So here's the first image. Here's the second image. This one just shows the metal texture on the floor. This one simulates the light. You can see there's more shadows there. It looks more defined. It looks more realistic. And depending on your lighting and your scene, different materials, some will look more defined. Some will look more subtle, kind of like this one. So just to simulate this, I'm going to make the light a lot stronger. You don't need to do this for your scene. I'm just going to do this to show you the power of the bump maps. So I'm going to turn up this intensity. You see that? You see how it's casting the shadows and everything on this surface? So now I'm going to go to the material. And once again, you don't have to do this. This is just me showing you the difference. I'm going to remove the bump map and just keep a plain texture there. So this is the plain texture. This is it with the bump map. Plain bump map. You don't typically see it like this in real life. You see it like this. You see the shadows and everything there. And there's so many other things we can do with this to make it more realistic, but just to keep it simple, I'm just showing bump maps for now. So if you've ever done 3D work before and you've textured your walls and floors and whatnot, it's always kind of looked flat and plain, try bump map. It works with a lot of things. Wood, concrete, metal, that seems to be the best. It's really cool with metal. If you got like rust on there or something, the rust actually looks like it's sticking out and it looks really good with lights and shadows. So, hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. Again, this will work on multiple different programs. The workflow is different because they're different interfaces, but it's the same vocabulary, bump map, you know, lighting, shading, texture, material. It's the same across multiple programs and there's other great ones out there. Blender is free, it's open source and it's very powerful. If you want to start with 3D, I recommend Blender. Okay, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you later. Videos are just the beginning. Check out these other great websites for great content from the Computer Clan and subscribe for more great videos from Real Deal Productions.